Hello, this is Bryant Myers, author of the book PEMF, The Fifth Element of Health. In this second video on the hormesis effect, we're going to build upon the ideas that we talked about in the first video and look more carefully, especially at the hormesis effect in PMF therapy and even low-light laser therapy and how the two correlate. And you're going to scientifically see why higher doses and higher intensities are not only less effective, but potentially even harmful. So to review the hormesis effect, it refers to a precise definition of a biphasic dose response to an environmental agent. And again, this is like an inverted U curve that we looked at in the first video. And it's characterized by a low dose stimulation or beneficial effect and a high dose inhibitory or toxic effect. Hormesis is the application of a stressor that results in recoverability and creates more strength, better health, more fertility, and longer life. So let's get right into the hormesis effect in low-light laser therapy, and then we'll see the correlations that it has in PMF therapy. So low-light laser therapy works by hormesis by invoking your body's stress response, specifically nitric oxide in the free radical pathways. Therefore, like any kind of natural tool, or you can call it a hormetic tool, it is wise to use laser therapy prudently. And there's a lot of research. Michael Hamblin at the Harvard Medical School is considered one of the world's experts in low-light laser therapy. I just want to go over a few of his findings because it's very well known that low doses work better than high doses. That is, lower intensities of laser light work better and have less side effects than higher intensities. So there is a frequency component. The best wavelengths for low-light laser have been shown to be around 810 nanometers If you pulse the light with a frequency, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, 1,000 hertz, they found that 10 hertz was the most beneficial. So not only having a specific frequency that penetrates, you know, 810 is in your near infrared, but also pulsing that light at basically an earth frequency seems to work the best. And that's why they call it LLLT, low light laser therapy. What the research has shown, Michael Hamblin and others, is that the best results come from just a few joules per square centimeter, but once you get up to 50 to 100 joules per square centimeter or higher, it becomes detrimental or harmful. This is one of the best examples in energy medicine, that more is not better, because it has the most research. If you go to any conference on low-light laser therapy, you will hear about hormesis over and over. And this has been verified in many laboratories around the world. It's not a question of, is this true? It's been proven to be true. And it really makes sense because when you use higher intensities, you end up releasing more reactive oxygen species and more nitric oxide, basically. Because the thing about nitric oxide is that we hear the benefits of it for you know, vasodilation and circulation, but actually high levels of nitric oxide have adverse effects, meaning they can compete with oxygen at certain sites within the electron transport chain making ATP. And again, research in many, many papers has shown this, that a few joules per square centimeter works the best. You get the best benefits and you get no side effects. Let's look at, just kind of as a little aside, low-light laser therapy versus PMF therapy. There actually is one study published by the American Journal of Research Communication that actually put head-to-head low-light laser therapy versus PMF therapy for the inactivation of myofascial trigger points, that is, referred pain. And what this study found was that PMF induces tiny electrical signals that stimulate cellular repair, suppressing the inflammatory response, alleviating pain, and increasing the range of motion of the patient studied. I won't get into all the details of the study, but the benefits for low-light laser therapy were not as profound as PMF therapy for pain relief and tissue healing and regeneration. But again, both do work. So now let's look at the hormesis effect in PEMF therapy, and we're going to find that it actually mirrors very closely all the research and results from low-light laser therapy. For example, the 10 hertz pulsing being the most effective for low-light laser therapy The NASA study with PMF therapy also showed that 10 hertz pulse was the most effective. And just as low-light laser therapy literature shows that low intensities work the best, and when you start to get up into higher intensities, you get side effects. Similarly, the NASA study, which we're going to look at, as well as some other studies, shows that very low intensity seems to work better for tissue healing and regeneration. So we're going to kind of look at sort of an intuitive, natural approach with the body-mind-earth connection. 
going to get into the NASA study a little bit, and then a couple international governing agencies, which very clearly show the hormesis effect. Beginning with the body-mind-earth connection, which I talk about in my book in some detail, there's a 0 to 30 hertz window of frequencies. It seems to be the ideal frequency that our bodies, our minds, our tissues, and our cells resonate to, with a peak at 7 to 8 hertz, which is the Schumann resonance. Just very briefly, Addy and Bowen showed that there's a window of frequency intensity at the cell level, and roughly 0 to 30 hertz is what PMF frequency the cells ideally responded to. Siskin and Walker showed that applying PMF to a range of different tissues, mainly within the 0 to 30 hertz range, had the ideal effects. You know, muscle and bone and nerve tissue were all stimulated primarily within that 0 to 30 hertz range. Then you have the study of Dr. Zimmerman, which he showed that we even emit these frequencies. And he looked at Reiki healers, and this was duplicated by Seto in Japan, And finally, there's the research that's very well established of brain state research, which we know our brains operate from low delta to high beta, which is a 0 to 30 hertz frequency window. So that is our consciousness, our brains are really wired to the frequencies of the earth, which with the Schumann resonance being at 7.8, and the first three or four harmonics, and those are the primary harmonics, which have the highest intensity, are all within 0 to 30 hertz. Check out my book. I go into a lot of detail on that. With regards to power and intensity, also, just like low-light laser therapy, there's good research with the NASA study showing that less is more. The lower intensities work better for healing and regeneration. Just briefly, again, the NASA study showed that a rapid varying waveform, like a sawtooth or a square wave, a low frequency, and again, they found 10 hertz to be the most effective, and a low intensity, and they found the intensities between 1 to 20 microtesla to be the most effective, which is even lower than the natural static or DC intensity of the Earth's magnetic field, which is 33 to 66 microtesla. The next piece of evidence here showing the hormesis effect in PMF therapy is some really good studies done by the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. That's I-C-N-I-R-P. And they're a worldwide authority on safety related to electromagnetic energy. And they found that safety depends on intensity and frequency. Again, this is right within that 0 to 30 hertz range. Up to 5,000 microtesla is safe. Not necessarily the most effective. But notice that the body can handle a slightly higher intensity with the lower frequencies of the earth. But if you use a frequency above 25 hertz, then... Anything over 5 microtesla is not necessarily good for the body. So within PMF therapy, just like laser therapy, the hormesis effect is both a frequency and intensity dependent type of curve. And assuming you're using a low frequency, the lower intensities, like the NASA study showed, seems to work best. And you can see this chart here, which summarizes that. I want to now get into the myths of high-intensity PEMF. More is not better in PMF therapy. You know, again, the hormesis effect shows this. More is not better. Better is better. And this more is better mentality is very pervasive in our society. It's the supersize me, give me more mentality that gets us into a lot of trouble. You know, trying to use high doses or high intensity PEMF is a very forceful approach that backfires in the long run. Why? Because the body has to defend against this external force which takes it out of its natural healing abilities. The thing about these high-intensity PMF systems is some of them use ridiculously high intensities, upwards to 2 Tesla. That's almost 100,000 times stronger than the natural static field of the Earth. I sometimes refer to these high-intensity PMF devices as allopathic energy medicine because they do use that symptomatic approach to healing pain. It's not necessarily healing the body faster. But it can symptomatically numb the pain. But, you know, the low-intensity systems do that as well, and they do it a lot safer. In conclusion, the hormesis effect is one of the most important principles to understand in alternative healing, energy medicine, and PMF therapy because it dispels the myth that a higher dose will work better, that a larger amount will do more good, or in the case of PMF therapy, the myth that more power or higher intensities work better because they don't. And just as low-light laser therapy has shown beyond a shadow of a doubt, higher intensity causes more damage and has less benefits. 
And with this same understanding that the low-light laser community has discovered and very well researched at Harvard and other institutions, it is my hope that with understandings of the frequencies and intensities of the Earth, the NASA study, the copious research on low-intensity PMF systems, the regulatory guidelines like the ICNRP and DIN, etc., it is my hope that the PMF industry will follow suit, follow what the laser industry has done, and start to promote more widely the low-level PMF therapy or low-intensity PMF as the safest and most effective option especially for home use. Thanks for listening, and for more information, go to my website, pemfbook.com. You can instantly download three free chapters there. I always welcome your questions, comments, and feedback. Get in touch with me at pmfbook.com forward slash contact. I sincerely hope the information in these videos will help you in your quest for greater health, happiness, and well-being.